Hey, good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday, August 2nd. I hope you're doing great and you're staying cool in all the summer heat. We're gonna have a great morning this morning. Again, we're gonna look at God's word and we're gonna worship. So as usual, let's start off with a great worship song. Here we go. It's just my lucky day. <laughs> Ooh, 
<laughs> You're telling me this day could not get any better. Cool watch. Cool me. What could go wrong, dude? <laughs> Where do you think you lost it, honey? I don't know. I took a long walk and I think it just slipped off somewhere. We'll never find it on this long beach. Surely they are not looking for this watch. <laughs> they could be looking for anything. People lose stuff on the beach all the time, dude. They probably just lost a, I don't know, a bucket or a kid or something. Hey, even if it is their watch, finders keepers, losers weepers, right? I mean, come on, I deserve something good like this. I've been surfing for hours, dude. Hey, I know what I'll do. Reading my Bible always makes me feel better, and I haven't read my youth group lesson yet. God must be rewarding me with this watch for being so faithful. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. Commandment number eight, do not steal. Well, this isn't stealing, is it? Joshua 24, 14 through 15. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Huh. Well, I guess I already get enough gifts. A good swell is a gift from God, right? <laughs> and I don't have to take it from anyone. Here you go. Take good care of her, dude. And find that kid. We don't have a kid. Proverbs 8:11. For wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Bill. Can you believe it's the first Sunday in August? Wow, the summer is flying by so fast. During the month of August, we will be having five lessons from the book of James. Do you know where the book of James is in your Bible? Grab your Bible and let's see if we can find it. Let me give you some hints. First hint, it's near the end of the New Testament. Second hint, it's after the book of Hebrews and before the book of 1 Peter. Have you found it yet? If not, keep looking until you find it. The book of James only has five chapters and today we're going to look at some verses in chapter 1. The verses we'll look at are James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. Again, that's James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. Let me read those verses for you. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think, that man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. I want to focus on a couple of topics from these verses. First, I want to talk with you about wisdom. To do that, let's start with what wisdom is not. Wisdom is not just being smart or intelligent. There are a lot of smart and intelligent people who don't act wisely. Wisdom is not just knowing a lot of information or being able to make good grades in school. Wisdom is taking what you know and applying it with good judgment. Some people know a lot, but they don't apply that knowledge in the right way. The book of Proverbs talks a lot about being wise or being foolish. If you know what is right and true, but you choose not to apply that knowledge in the right way, then you are being foolish. Let me give you an example. It's been proven that wearing your seatbelt while riding in a car can save your life. So we could say choosing to wear your seatbelt while driving is a wise decision. 
But what if I know that wearing my seatbelt could save my life, but I still choose not to wear it? Then you could say I was being foolish. I'm not applying what I know with good judgment. So what is wisdom? It is taking knowledge and applying it with good judgment. Now let's answer the question, how do you get wisdom? To answer that, let me first share an important verse with you. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, which says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The first step in getting wisdom is to fear the Lord. Now, fearing the Lord doesn't mean that you're afraid of God. God loves you and cares about you and wants to be your heavenly Father. Fearing the Lord means that uh, you show God great respect and honor. It means that you believe in Him and you believe His Word and you try to obey it. You see, God is the one who created wisdom and knowledge, and without seeking Him, we cannot truly find wisdom. The second step in getting wisdom is to do what it says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. If we are in a situation where we need wisdom, we should turn to God in prayer. God is the source of wisdom, and he wants to give it to us, but we have to remember to go to him and ask. Another way to get wisdom is to read and study God's word, the Bible. I love these verses from Psalm 119, verses 97 through 99, which says, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. Knowing God's word gives you wisdom, but remember, you must obey God's word in order to be wise. The final topic I want to focus on is belief. James tells us in chapter 1 that when we ask God for wisdom, we should believe and not doubt. James says if we doubt, we are like the waves in the sea blown and tossed by the wind. I don't know about you, but I sometimes struggle with doubt. Sometimes I might doubt God's promises. Sometimes I might doubt that God will answer my prayers. I think we all have doubts from time to time. What I've learned is that it comes down to a choice. I can choose to believe or I can choose to doubt. So whenever doubt creeps into my thoughts, I choose to believe God's word. God is faithful and true and we can believe him and trust him. So let's choose belief over doubt. Hey, it was great being with you today. Remember, take what you've learned today and apply it in your life. Until next time, I'll see you later. Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Pablo, and it's August, so it's time for our August Bible verse. But you know, I gotta talk to you about something really serious first. And I don't think we've talked about this in the last few months, but you know, there's God, right, God, and He's your, He created you, He's your protector, he's your guide, he's your God. He died on the cross for you. Oh my goodness, he loves you, right? And we know that God is not a person like we are, but he is a person. And there's God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit, and God the Son. And what's the Son's name? Do you know? That's right, it's Jesus. God the Son's name is Jesus. And we know that Jesus actually came and became a man and he died on the cross for us. Well, you know, there's so many people in this world and there's so many different things. And I wanted to talk to you about someone called the devil. A lot of people don't like to talk about him because it's kind of scary for some people. And it's kind of, it's kind of like saying, not a bad word, but it's very uncomfortable. You know when you're sitting on something that's uncomfortable like a hot pavement or you're sitting on some rocks or you're sitting on some thorns and it's uncomfortable? Well, when people talk about the devil, it's a little uncomfortable like that. And the devil is a real being who doesn't want good things for you. It sounds like he does, like he'll say, oh, you're missing out on all the fun, but when you're really not, 
or yeah, you should go ahead and eat that extra cookie. When your mom or said no, or you shouldn't eat the extra cookie, or you need to stay up a little later to watch the rest of the show, when you know it's past your bedtime and that you need to go to bed. And he'll do things like that for you to try to get you into trouble. And I know because I have listened sometimes and I've gotten into trouble. And so the devil is um, it's like a person and it's a bee, he's a being who wants very much for you to get into trouble and not to obey God. And so that's what the verse is about today a little bit. So it's in here. And yes, this looks like a cute little being, but he's really not cute. And the sign for him, if when we're gonna do this, because he's got horns, so if you point to your head and there's some horns, so that's how we're gonna do that, okay? Horns is the devil. So sometimes the devil will tell you things in your head and you'll, you'll kind of know it. Or the devil might use somebody else to try to get you to do something that's disobedient to your mom and dad and disobedient to what God wants you to do. So that's our talk about the devil. And we might talk about him um, again some other time. But I kind of wanted to talk to you about it today since he's part of our August Bible verse. And our August Bible verse has some concepts in it that we're going to learn okay so we're going to read it first and then we'll do some motions so it'll make it easier for you to to work on and then we'll have again the whole month of august to uh to practice okay all right so this month's bible verse comes from james james 4 7 and 8 so it's not the complete one, but we're just doing it so that it's easier for us to do, okay? So I've put, taken some words out, but I've left the rest of it in so that we can learn it. But I want you to be able to remember James 4, 7, and 8, okay? All right. Now this word here is called submit. Submit is a very strange word. Again, it's a very strange word. And that word means that you need to um, put yourself uh, under somebody else's authority. So um, my authority is Mr. Pablo and God and I live in the United States of America so I'm submitting myself under the law so I have to follow the law so I have to go on I have to be under the law okay so submit just means that you're obeying something. Now you gotta you have to pick which what that is so submit and James says that we need to submit to follow, to obey who, you think? God, right? We obey God. So submit to God. And we're going to submit to God. And then it says resist the devil. Because when the devil says things to you, you're supposed to say, um, no, no, I'm not going to do that. My mom and dad said to do it this way, and I'm going to follow their directions. I'm going to obey. Sometimes we don't want to obey, right? Okay. So resist the devil. When you resist the devil, it says, and he will flee from you. That means he's going to run away from you because he's not really a brave being. He's a scaredy cat. He's scared of God. So if you resist the devil, it says resist the devil and he will flee from you. He's going to run because he doesn't want to get caught. Okay. Come close to God and he will come close to you. So we're gonna read that all the way through. James 4, 7 and 8. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and he will come close to you. Now we're gonna do some hand motions. So remember what I showed you already, submit. So this is you and you're submitting and you're saying to God, I'm going to be under, I'm going to follow your rules. When you live in a house and you've got a mom and dad, they've got rules and you are submitting. You're coming underneath that, underneath their rules. So you're going to submit to who? To God. And then it says resist. And the way that we show resist is kind of like this, resist. We are not going to let the devil, the being that's, that wants so badly for us to make mistakes and to do wrong, we're going to resist. We're going to resist the devil, right? We're going to resist the devil. 
and he's going to flee from you. And then here's God and here's you. Come close. You are going to come close to God and he will come close to you. Okay, that's our Bible verse for August. I really think you can do this. But I, I really want you to learn it so that you hide it in your heart. So when next time that devil, that being, that, that being that doesn't want you to obey tells you something in your ear that says, oh, I think you should do it. You'll say, no, I'm going to resist. All right, are you ready? James 4, 7 and 8. Submit to God. Resist the, see if I can do this right. Oh yeah, there we go. The devil. So let's try that again. We'll try that again. Okay, James 4, 7 and 8. My says Pablo's getting it all crazy. James 4, 7 and 8. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and he will come close to you. James 4, 7 and 8. Now, I, I know you're going to have a lot of time to learn this and you've got to keep practicing because really it's not about the motions. It's about you memorizing um, all of what God wants us to do and then it'll be easier to obey. All right? Okay. Keep practicing and we'll see you next week.